Hey, thanks for coming to the channel. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, I have uh, some stuff to show you today. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it is a VCT solenoid in the foreground with a just a, your typical kind of pick sticking in here um, to show when this thing is moving. And um, over to the lower left over here, let me see, I should have a pointer of some sort, right? Here, let me see. Over to the left over here, you'll see a power supply, which is supplying power to the solenoid. Back here is a, uh, a pretty cool little microprocessor um, deal. It's like uh, ready to be embedded into something. It's, uh, it's a Raspberry Pi. Pretty powerful. It's got a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and... Um, uh, you know, I can plug, uh, it's, it's got, um, USBs and wired. No, it's crazy, man, what, all the stuff this thing's got in. But anyway, today I am using it to control a little circuit that I built here, which is, uh, a pulse width modulator circuit. Let me close that down and just calm down here because I keep getting distracted. Let me try to stay focused here. Basically what I wanted to show is is how notice the deflection of that pick. That notice that's why I have that pick in there. Um, this is how a pulse width modulated solenoid is operated. It's actually a linear actuator. Really it's a motor, right? They all are. Now notice the voltage over here. See the voltage going down? That's because I am pulling a lot of current right now. Uh, this thing, you know, it goes in your vehicle. This came off a of 5.4, well, it didn't. It's a brand new piece, so it's supposed to go onto a 5.4 liter um, V8, right, for a Ford. And basically, I just wanted to show how this works, how the, you know, basically when we have a problem, when you go out to, when you say, oh, I think I have a problem with my solenoid, what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll grab the wires, right? And then, look, I'm looking for, I'm going to connect it, right? And we'll just connect it, right? And look, look at it. See how it jumped? See that? Let me try that. That's what we'll do. Just as a sanity test. What I'm doing is I'm just connecting it directly to, um, you know, just 12 volts, right? Just hooking 12 volts straight up and it's total makes sense Cause, because you do two things continuity is one thing but you can have a melted coil too right so we know two things that there's definitely continuity there because we saw the movement and that the coil is not only continuous but it's actually uh, has inductive capability of meaning you know, you know push the ferro blah, 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 all the technical the ferromagnetic it will push stuff etc etc but the point is, is that it, as you're driving a car, um, it's operating on a feedback loop. So it's constantly sort of readjusting where exactly, right? Because this is regulating the flow of oil to affect the, um, your angle on your overhead cam, typically your overhead cam, right? Um, it's like an offset. And when this is not actuated, it's sort of in its zero position. And when you're running, and this is going to, you know, make your car run more optimally based on, right, everybody, it's a whole other discussion why you vary the uh, valves, right? But mainly um, is to show, what I want to show is, is that these solenoids, they don't like bang, you know, off on like the trunk solenoid, right? This is a very sophisticated operation here. Um, that little jumping that's going on there, that's my software. There's a little, a little bugginess going in my software because it's not, uh, here's, here's a technical term, it's not perfectly multi-threaded. But anyways, so now here on an oscilloscope is what pulse width modulation looks like, right? Now basically, to control, um, to control something without using variable right this this is this is using the 12 uh, actually this is just the signal going in so it's three volts but um controlling the power without right varying it, it's either off or on and what you do is you just get tricky when I'm, I'm reaching over here trying to uh this just goes on forever right this is a signal that you just you're just sending all these pulses right pulse with modulation so we're what are we doing we're zooming in right look at all them and it just keeps sending them, 
And that's what an oscilloscope does. It just helps you sort of uh, uh, conceptualize what's going on. So as we zoom in, and now I'm going to, right, we're at 55, 55%. So let me move this down to 10%. Okay, so what that is is 10%, and I'll move it while I'm pointed, right? So, so this is like almost a hundred. That's like 99. Now that's a hundred percent duty cycle. Uh, you know, let's say that's like 75%. Of course, 50% is equal on both sides. It's a perfect uh, square wave uh, duty cycle. Let's say that's uh, you know I'm just uh, bar ballparking. It's 25%. You know, then it's like down real low then it's zero zero duty cycle so a pulse with notice it's pulses and we're modulating the width of the pulses and that's it and it's a percentage and you can do this at different rates right I can send pulses uh, a little faster a little slower right these are pulses right again that are being sent um, you know in series uh, very fast I think here what we got is 500 a second Right? I think is what's, what I have this set to. But the important thing is not how many you're sending or how fast, but that the width of each one is, the per, is a certain percentage. So we turn it all the way on or we, you know, or we turn it all the way off. Very cool. Isn't that cool, man? Right? So um, a pulse width modulated solenoid is controlled by a pulse width right and we can check this thing by doing a continuity test or like what we did is just shocking it with um oh by the way I have a light I don't know if you notice I got this light it's just for my own sanity as I vary <laughs> it this is the same concept that you dim lights in a car when you, when you turn your car on and the the light comes on or where it's on and slowly goes off, right? Instead of having some guy over here playing with a slider on a, uh, playing with a slider, uh, it'll be on a timer or some nice automatic thing and you don't think about it and you won't even see it. So we got all the, this little orchestrated little musical here, right? So we have, uh, kind of feels like almost, and, um, yeah, I have that patient over there. Look at that. Oh, it's blurry. That's a QS88. It's one of the best keyboards ever made. Anyway, so, uh, what's this crap? That's just videos. Oh, that's me trying to make video 99 times. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you. Oh, by the way, uh, it's like a, it's sort of how the oxygen sensors work in a car. Uh, it's a feedback, right? It's not that the computer says, oh, 47% is this far deflection, and that means that. What it'll do is it will um, get feedback through the position sensors of your cams, and it will adjust this little valve here for the flow to adjust the, um, the degree offset and um, your zero error, your, your error is the difference between what it expects to see, right? If I move this, I want to, like if this thing, if, if this thing is not positioned the way I want, I can, I can play with this. And that's the way the computer works. It will, it will fudge around with this until it gets it in the right position. Then what the difference is between where it wants it and where it ends up, like for if this got stuck somehow, right? If 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 I got this stuck and 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 now as a computer, I'm like, wait a minute. No matter how much I move, I can't I can't do anything. Then I'll say my VCT error is huge or you know some value. But now if I see that everything's in accordance with where, then I'll say, oh, the difference is zero. Okay. It, when you see a, your VCT error is zero, it's not that your VCT position angle is zero it means that the difference between what your computer is trying to do and what it sees actually happening is zero which is like this case is a real sloppy version right this is uh but i just um i wanted to give you guys something visual to see uh on how these um on how these, what, what do you call it, uh, pulse width modulated solenoids operate. It's pretty wild stuff, right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool.
Uh, what, what's back here? This is just a uh, code back here. Let me uh, try to see. Right, that's the code. That's just some of the code. Actually, that's not really... Nobody cares, right? Somebody cares. On my other channel, Thought Pill, I'll, I'll go into the code more. But it's a, pi, it's a Python script. There's not much to it, really. Not much at all. I'm trying to make it multi-threaded, but it's not perfect. It'll it'll hiccup and burp and, and do weird things um, still. But I just wanted to be able to demonstrate the... Uh, how this works this pull and and by the way this this uh, raspberry pi thing oh man i i was many years too late messing with this stuff or they have just come out with some great versions of this oh by the way the deflection over here uh, i don't know you might be it's very small right uh, of course anybody who's been working with this stuff knows that uh, small is not is a relative term and when you're dealing with pressure so i think it's about i think maximum deflection i'm getting out of this is like i can't lean on that is like two two millimeters two and a half mil let's see what do you what do you see let's see yeah two millimeters maybe almost two and a half right Anyway, so there it is, man. Um, thanks for coming to the channel. I wanted to. I, I made another version of this video. I apologize. It really sucked, actually. I looked. I looked at it. it was like kind of didn't like it. Um, here it is, and um, this is about how pulse width. Let me just while I'm talking, because I'm always talking, talking too much. Let me give you something to look at, man. I'm back. Oh wow. You know the pulse width modulation. This is how it works. You know this is kind of this is what an oscilloscope. You know what an oscilloscope is? It's like see see that stuff that's coming down. I have to have a trigger on that to make it look all nice and stable. If I don't have a trigger on that, look at that. Look how it gets right. It's just real quick, real quick like thing. It's just like a ceiling fan. Right? If this room was completely dark and I had a strobe light, you know what would happen, right? That ceiling fan, we'd be able to, like, it would look like it wasn't moving, right? But it, but every time that the strobe would go off, it would be in a different position. So it would look cool, but it wouldn't be very organized. Now, Right, it's the same thing here. We're, we're getting the signal, but there's nothing organizing it. So what, 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 this, what you do is you come down and you make a trigger. And you're like, boom. Oh, yeah, right there. We catch it. It's like you just catch it. And it's like you can say that the trigger is going to be, you know, oh, geez. All right, you know what? I'm not going to get too crazy because I'm going to get all lost in this freaking thing. Um, anyway, you get the point. You get the point, man. You get the deal. <laughs> I always get carried away. I thank you for forgiving me for getting carried away and going on and on with stuff. You know, I'll be like, I'm saying goodbye, and people are like, man, is this guy ever going to leave our house? And It's a good thing, because I really don't go out a whole lot, but when I knew that could happen. But I usually, I'm pretty like, you know, I'm leaving now. I'm just like, I don't really stick around. Like, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I get even tired of hearing myself talk. All right, all right. So, thanks a lot for coming by. Thanks a lot for checking out my oscilloscope. I'm a little bit messy on the floor a little bit. And my keyboard, man. The keyboard's got a special circuit in it that keeps it quiet for a couple seconds while you turn it on. And that's freaking stopping the whole thing from working. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Enjoy yourself. I appreciate you. And um, thanks for coming, man. And, um... OBD2 uh, Android app is in great shape. The PC app is garbage. I have to work on it. So I'll catch you back. You know, I'll catch you guys, man. Thanks a lot. Take care.